In this VFX breakdown of Wonder Woman, we're going to take a look at some massive digital environments, CG planes, trains and automatic rifles, explosions, guns, running. Also, coming up, we'll be showing you how to make stunning VFX yourself for absolutely free with Skillshare, so stay tuned for that too. A lot of problems with filming a movie that is set in the World War I era are not only that a lot of the architecture, vehicles and infrastructure that existed back then no longer exist today, but also that a lot of the architecture, vehicles and infrastructure that exists today didn't exist back then. This meant that a huge amount of sets and scenery had to either be digitally extended have something added or removed, or, like in the case of this military base, be 100% computer generated. And that included everything, even soldiers that were in the background. The warehouse explosion was also computer generated. Now, London today is almost completely different from how it was over 100 years ago. This meant that UPP had to digitally recreate a period-correct London, imitating how it would have looked back in 1918. In addition to this, the sets that were constructed for the live-action plate were rather small, and so the majority of shots required set extensions, or CG buildings of some kind. Pixomondo was told that the train that was taking the soldiers to the docks had to be period correct, so the train was CGI. The train station also had to be period correct, so that too was CGI. And the docks, ramps, bridges and indeed the ship itself all had to be period correct, so all of that was also CGI. However, one of the things that we spotted that actually isn't technically period correct is the long-range bomber that Steve Trevor flies at the end of the movie. This bomber didn't actually exist, as the German Air Force never used a bomber with four different engines in different nacelles. But even so, it still doesn't really look out of place, and it doesn't stop it from looking awesome. But not all the visual effects in Wonder Woman were there to solve the problem of the different time era. Others were done to increase the impact of a scene, like in the Veld Town sequence, where MPC added explosion enhancements, dust, and ground impacts. Oh, yeah, and this CG tank. VFX were also used to add detail to a shot, as they did for Wonder Woman's glowing lasso, which in each of these shots was actually hand animated. Pretty cool. VFX were also used just for aesthetic purposes. Look at this scene, for example. You'll notice that the actress's running isn't what you'd call heroic. This is because it's actually quite hard to look good whilst running on rough terrain. And even when you're running in comfy boots or even sneakers, because your heels are going to be digitally added later. So the filmmakers actually filmed shots like these, with the actress running on a treadmill in front of a green screen, which actually looks quite convincing. And for all you VFX enthusiasts out there who I'm sure are already aware, knowing how to correctly chroma key is a huge skill that will open up a world of possibilities in your productions. Or perhaps even a whole universe! I levelled up my chroma keying in just half an hour with Nick Carter. No, not that Nick Carter, this guy. Nick Carter. He got my fingers crisp and Matt's garbage in no time, and that really is the beauty of Skillshare. Once you sign up, you can literally spend all day levelling up your skills on pretty much anything, from graphic design to movie making and more. 
and the first 1,000 people to use the link on my video description box or my code FAMEFOCUS will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And it's as easy as that. Go ahead and give Skillshare a try today. I fully recommend it. You won't be disappointed. Now, something incredibly surprising about the visual effects in Wonder Woman is the tremendous amount of digi doubles and face replacements they had to do. In this Themyscira beach fight scene, there was a digi double for the general, one for the queen, German soldiers like this guy, and the occasional CG horse. Principal photography for the Themyscira scenes was shot on locations along the Italian Amalfi coast and the old town of Matera. But somehow they needed to make this Italian landscape look like Themyscira, so they sent a photographer out to China to take high-res photographs of the mountain ranges. And so the mountain ranges in the background of this shot are actually from the Guangxi region of southern China. And if you spotted Mr. Green who we've hidden back in the video, let us know below and we'll respond to your comment.